Remember when you could hit Enderman with an arrow? Or when lava blocks were attainable without a bucket? And these are 51 Minecraft things that have changed since 2012. And hey, according to YouTube, it's impossible to subscribe with your device upside down. So to prove them wrong, flip your screen and aim for that red sub button above. It's free and it helps out a ton. But before we get into this video, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Dragon City. Now, Minecraft's a great game and it's only got one dragon. So by that logic, Dragon City should be an awesome game because there are thousands of dragons to choose from. It's a proven science, trust me. Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game available right now on all devices, and you can download it with the link in my description. And when you do, you'll start on your new quest to build your very own dragon empire. But to do that, you'll need to collect different materials to help breed your dragons to evolve them into fighting machines. Because, oh yeah, these things can fight. And you can also use them to fight your friends and foes in the PvP arena. Which all sounds cool, but this feature is a dream come true. It's dream. Dreams in the game. Oh, and George too. So if you're looking to join the Alliance and work with other Dragon pros to unlock new special rewards and chests, then download the game by whacking that link in the description below. Or scan the QR code on screen and get a special starter pack of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the Flame Knight Dragon. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks Dragon City for this great deal, and enjoy the video. Here's how you get Infinite Obsidian. At least, Infinite Obsidian back in 2012. Since the system to make this was just using a standard cobblestone generator, and then placing a piece of redstone dust where the cobblestone would form. And there you go, Infinite Obsidian. Though, understandably, this got patched out in 1.8. But Infinite Obsidian is still possible, you're just gonna need a wither, and a whole bunch of nether portals. Here's how you get water in the nether. See, back in Java version 1.2 or older, it was possible that if you put ice in the nether, it would melt and then turn into a water source block which was fixed in 1.3, but we would eventually get water in the nether once again through this snapshot with a glow like it. Though that got fixed too, so it's definitely something Mojang's trying to keep an eye out for. Back in the day, the end dimension used to look like a mess. And I'm not talking about the old endstone texture, but rather the obsidian pillars that would spawn there were scattered and unorganized back in the day. And really it's hard to appreciate this one until you look at a side by side, because now with the ring of pillars, it looks so much better. And I'm sure that Sandiction's build wouldn't have looked nearly as good if this didn't get fixed. Before the update Aquatic in 1.13, any items that you threw into the water would all float down to the bottom of the ocean floor. But nowadays, they thankfully will all float up to the surface and bob in place. Which is nice in and of itself, but it's also really helpful considering that the oceans used to be so much darker. So if you lost your stuff down there, they were pretty much lost to the sands of time. Now, it is true that you can't hit an enderman with any projectiles, but that wasn't the case in 2012. Since back then, an enderman still wouldn't be hit by an arrow, but if you used a flaming arrow, then that enderman would take damage and catch fire as it would. Though this got fixed in 1.5, which is definitely a bummer for my flame bow. Villager trades used to be a ripoff, and that's not me being cheeky, but it's quite literally true. Since in the past, there were villager trades that would ask for more than 64 emeralds per trade, which makes it completely unobtainable to the player since you can't offer more than 64 in a stack at a time. And in 1.8, that got limited down to the stack limit. Nowadays, command blocks are indestructible, but that wasn't always the case. And in fact, when they first came out, you could place them and even mine them in survival. Though even though you were able to place and move around this block, you couldn't use it unless you were in creative mode. And after 1.6.1, you couldn't even do that. So really, it wasn't that useful of a block if you're in survival. Now this is a lava bucket, and this is a lava source block. So how do we get both in our inventory? Well, in the past, the give command was a lot stronger than it is today. So if you typed in slash give player 10 or 11, it would give you either flowing or stationary lava blocks. And as you can probably guess, this got removed in 1.8, which is too bad, but honestly, I don't know the point of having one of these versus just a regular lava bucket. If you played Minecraft back in the day, then you know that these boats would break all the time. But part of that was by design, since in 2012, you could only exit a boat or minecart if you broke the vehicle. And without the ability to left shift to dismount, that means that we could cause certain situations where you softlock yourself in that boat, completely unable to get out. Which is definitely the saddest way to lose your hardcore world. That's just brutal. In the past, if you emptied a water bucket inside of a cauldron, there was no way to remove it. And the only way to get the water out of the cauldron was to break the cauldron and replace it, since using water bottles or an empty bucket couldn't do anything on it. Which makes it seem like cauldron have been useless for a whole long time. And maybe it's true that they're more useful for lava these days than they've ever been for water. Using lapis lazuli to enchant seems expensive, but it used to be so much worse. Since back in the day, it would require 50 levels for a max level enchant. And folks, that's not just 50 levels to qualify, that's 50 levels for one enchantment. And even though that got bumped down to 30 levels in 1.3.1, it was eventually entirely reworked in 1.8 to where you just need three levels after you hit the 30 level enchant barrier. Did you know that enchanted golden apples used to be a 
bad thing? Yeah, oddly enough, high levels of regeneration could actually lower or remove your invincibility frames entirely, which caused this bug to make you more susceptible to damage while you had an enchanted golden apple. And understandably so, this got fixed in 1.6.1, because that completely breaks this really powerful item. Now, although it was hard to summon the giant back in the day, there was a time where this mob actually had an AI. So when you got it into your world, it would both target and attack the player. And since it had 100 HP to its name and did 75 HP on attack, it was a lot scarier than the glorified statue that we've got today. Do you remember when desert pyramids used to look like this? Well, sure enough, when they were added in, these desert pyramids would generate with wool for the colorful bits instead of the orange and blue terracotta that we're used to. And the reason being is that that block wasn't in the game. It would take until 1.8 that we finally got it switched to hardened clay. And then that was later renamed to the terracotta we're used to. Nowadays, the creepers are much stronger than they used to be. Since back in the early days, a creeper's explosion would always be 43 points of damage at the strongest. But after some time, Mojang would change that to be 64 points of damage that we know today. Which, yes, does make the creeper stronger than the warden, which is crazy to think about. The eyes of Ender used to be a big waste of time, since they wouldn't always lead you to the closest stronghold. And what that would mean is that sometimes, it might be pointing you to one that you're nowhere near to, even if you're standing right above the closest one. And why did this bug happen? I'm not exactly sure, but it did get fixed in 1.6.1, so thankfully we don't have to worry about it anymore. When a zombie or skeleton used to stand on a slab, it wouldn't burn into the daylight, which is terrifying to say the least, so thankfully it's got fixed as well in 1.8. Otherwise, I'd have to make sure that I place a lot less slabs in my base, and I'm not looking for that kind of reality check. When you stood at close range, a skeleton could not shoot you, since in the older versions, a skeleton would try to rush forward and then shoot the player, which meant that if you cornered it in a 2x2x1 two by two by area, it would try to shoot you, but all of its shots would just hit the wall behind you, meaning that none of the arrows were capable of hitting the player. And unfortunately for us, the skeletons got a lot smarter in 1.9, and this doesn't work anymore. Roller coasters are a great thing, but in 2012, they were a nightmare, since the rails, no matter which way you placed them, would always be positioned on a north by south axis. And the only way to fix that was to add in more rails like so, which is a nightmare to say the least. And surprisingly, this took up until 1.15, where now it finally places facing the player, which is a bit late, but still better than the alternative. Baby zombies are annoying, but they used to be so much worse. Back in 2012, they would just chase you around forever, since no matter if it was day or night, they wouldn't burn in the sunlight. And in fact, that wouldn't be added in until 1.13, which was a lot of updates of having to deal with these ankle biters. And now thankfully, they take after their parents and say their goodbyes when it's daytime. In the early versions of Minecraft, animal breeding was buggy to say the least. So much so that if you wanted to breed your cows or your sheep, you could do that while they were eight blocks away, and with a fence wall in between them, which is definitely a glitch, but it kind of proves that love knows no bounds, so I think that's kind of sweet. Now, although the Wither Skeleton's been in the game since 1.4, they didn't get their own spawn egg until 1.11, which is just weird to think about, since how else were you going to get one of these things? I mean, the summon command didn't exist back then, so you're kind of out of options. Back in 1.3, we could fit up to 60 cows in this hole, but now, thanks to entity cramming, that maxes out at 24, which is a shame when you're trying to make an efficient farm, but it's definitely a lot more humane. This is what lava looks like nowadays, and this is what it looks like in 2012. It's pretty shocking, I know. And while there were a few textures that got changed in the updates following, it was in the 1.14 texture update that most of our textures got a huge rework when they were done by Jappa, which makes some comparisons definitely hard to look at. And thankfully, Netherrack looks like this instead of this mess. As we know it today, TNT has a 100% drop rate, which makes it indispensable for mining your resources with a tunnel bore like so. But that only got updated in 1.14. And back in 2012, you would have to mine out everything by hand or risk losing a good amount of your resources if you used a TNT block like so. With this one bucket, we can decimate this ocean. Let me show you how. See, back in 2012, water needed a solid block below it to generate an infinite water source. Meaning if we just grab a water bucket like so, this whole ocean will be completely washed out. And you can understand why they'd fix that in 1.5. When pistons were first added in, they had a lot more errors about them. And one of the reasons this would happen is that it would only take one redstone tick to activate them. Meaning with a fast enough clock, you could glitch them out like so. But later on, Mojang would double the amount of time that it would take them to extend, but they could still retract instantly. Did you know that the squids used to be stronger? Well, sure enough, if you would get one beached on land, in the past, they wouldn't suffocate. And in fact, they weren't given the ability to do so until the 1.4.4 release, proving that even in the past, Mojang barely cared about this pointless mob. Ten years ago, stairs used to be so much more annoying, since if you even went up them a little, it would force you to walk all the way up the stair. And it seems like Mojang noticed how annoying this was, because that was quickly changed. Though not until the update 1.5. So if you're playing inversions before that, I'm deeply sorry. Back in 2012, we didn't have horses or elytras, so that meant that running was the best way to get around. But even then, it wasn't a perfect system, because back then we had to double tap the walk key to actually sprint, and we wouldn't get a dedicated sprint button until 
that was added in the game in 1.7.2. You're probably familiar with this command to turn off fire ticks so that fires don't generate anymore. And while that does work, back in the day, it was a little wonky, since do fire tick would allow for lightning to still generate fires. Meaning, if you had enough time in a world, almost every single block would have a netherrack effect. Not letting fires spread, but also not getting rid of it. Before we got the update aquatic in 1.13, the ocean biome looked extremely dark. And in fact, even if you placed glowstone down there, that would only light up about five blocks around it. But nowadays, we've got things like sea lanterns and coral reefs to finally light up the abyss, which is nice, but that update also added in the drowned mob, so you get what you get, I guess. As it is, it's pretty tough to get a beacon to work in the nether, since you've got to clear out all of the nether rack above it. But in the past, it was even worse, since back then, the beacon beam wouldn't even go through the bedrock. So to even get it to work, you'd have to remove the unbreakable block from up top. And thankfully, that was corrected in 1.8.2, so you don't have to rely on a glitch to make this happen. In the past, we could only place chests like this, and that was it, since there was no way to place a third chest next to a double chest. Or rather, you could, but you'd have to use an alternating pattern of trapped chests and regular chests, and that was just a lot of hassle, and a lot of cost too. So thankfully, we got this restriction removed in 1.13, letting us place as many chests as we want right next to each other. Which is a nice fix, but I'm still hoping for the day that we get to place different wood types of chests right next to each other. That'll be especially cool. Not only were the oceans boring back in the past, but they also used to be way too big. Since back in the day, you could travel for thousands of blocks and not come across any side of mainland, which made it a big problem if you happen to spawn in a survival island like so. Which is why this got changed in 1.7.2 so that the ocean sizes were limited. Before the 1.8 update, we were able to use soul sand and other blocks that were slightly smaller than a full block hitbox to make these one-way doorways. Since if you walk through the archway like so, you could exit, but you couldn't come back because you would just be hitting your head on that top block. I mean, I guess you could always break the block, but in theory, it was a one-way doorway. It's funny to think that back in 2012, redstone looked entirely different. And the kind of redstone doors that we could build looked a lot more like this than the kind of monstrosities that we can build today. And I'm sure you could ask Mumbo Jumbo, as soon as that 1.5 update came out, that was definitely a blessing for the community. What's the difference between this desert well and this one? Well, in the past, the desert wells that you would find inside of desert villages had a bottom made out of cobblestone instead of sandstone. But in 1.11, that was changed so that it was more thematically consistent. Back in the day, golden apples used to be ridiculously cheap. And to get one of the basic ones, you only needed to use eight golden nuggets instead of the eight ingots that we use today. Though I guess nowadays they give us the absorption hearts, so maybe it is worth paying a little extra. And honestly, I'll save my golden nuggets for crafting golden carrots anyway. Those seem to be more useful. If you play on a PvP legacy server, you're definitely familiar with this one. Since back in 2012, we could PvP by spam clicking, but with 1.9, we got a huge overhaul to that system. And now we've got cooldown, shields, the whole works. Bone meal's a great thing, but it used to be so much better. Since in the past, you could immediately push a crop to its final stage, instead of getting a random buff like we do today. Which made it a lot more hilarious to spam trees on your friend's lawn, but I get why it was fixed. It definitely was overpowered. When we first started using them, ender pearls did not have a cooldown to them. So you could throw them continuously, which usually resulted in taking a lot of damage. But if you had feather falling boots, it was a fun way to get yourself out of trouble and right back to the action, completely transforming a version of PvP. Though in 1.9, it was changed so that they had a cooldown and that you could use them in creative mode, which I guess is a trade-off. Now, back in 2012, we did have ice and we did have boats, but we wouldn't have ice highways until 1.9. And the reason was because back in 2012, the boat would move as slow on ice as it did on land. So all you'd get from building yourself an ice highway was a waste of time to use an even greater wasted time on. Back in 2012, if you ended up going past 30 million blocks in either the X or Z direction, you'd start to run into these phantom chunks, where they'd still look like regular chunks, except once you went through them, you'd fall right into the void when you step on it. But now in 1.19, we can get to the world border, but we can't go past 29,999,999. In the past, it was possible for the Wither to destroy its own nether star due to its last minute detonations of Wither Skulls. No joke, there were times where if you killed the Wither, it might fire off one last minute projectile, and then that'll break the star before you actually get it, making that whole fight for naught. And thankfully, this got fixed in 1.5, where it was patched so that now the skulls that spawn on death were then forced removed. Nowadays, we're all familiar with the concept of an MLG water bucket save, but back in the day, it wasn't as popular, and for good reason. See, in the past, you'd need a puddle that was two blocks deep to stop any kind of fall damage, and it wasn't until after 1.4.4 that we could finally do this with one bucket. And imagine if this didn't change, I'm sure that Dream's manhunts would look a lot different. It seems like as long as villagers have been in the game, we've been trying to exploit their spawning techniques. And in the past, that was very different to do. All we needed was a door, a room, and a roof. And you can see that design in a villager breeder like this. And then, as soon as we got the village and pillage update in 1.14 to quote, fix the villager breeding, then it would instead require food and appropriate beds like so. Though both are very exploitable, so maybe it wasn't all that fixed.
fixed. These were how many spawn eggs we had in 2012, and this is how many spawn eggs we have in 1.19. It's a crazy comparison to look at, considering the last 10 years, we've gained over 50 mobs. And in fact, 71 isn't even all the mobs in the game. There's actually 79 of them that are accessible in the current version, making that discrepancy even bigger. In the past, we've sung the praises of using a boat to negate any fall damage that you might take in the nether. But there's a reason we didn't tell you to do this back in 2012. For one, the channel didn't exist, but also, back then, if you were in a boat, you would still take all of the fall damage that you take from a fall. And it wasn't until 1.7.2 that this finally got fixed, and our boat MLG started to work out a bit better. We're all familiar with this nether portal design. It's iconic, for sure. But back in the day, it was so iconic, it was the only one you could make. But luckily, as of 1.7.2, we've now had the option to give them a different width and height than the standard 4x5 that we were used to. And if you're in bedrock condition, you can get a whole lot more creative for the designs you make. Just make sure you build all of them without corners, otherwise you're wasting obsidian. When it was first added in, the wither was actually much easier to fight, since if you were to catch the wither inside of a minecart as it was charging up, you could interfere with its startup and it would only have as much health as it had before it went into the minecart. So if you did this correctly, you could end up fighting a wither that only had one third of its health. But that bug would get fixed in 1.5, which is unfortunate, but maybe don't tell Mojang about this even easier way to kill the wither. We'll just keep that between us. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right. Special thanks to Dragon City for their support on this video. Remember to scan the QR code on screen or use the link in my description to get a special bundle and start your Dragon Empire today.